Hello and welcome back to Sector Wargaming. Today I am Ian and this is Derek. And we've got a good game for you today. We've got the classic Iron Warriors versus Imperial Fists. And it's going to be a good laugh. Yeah, definitely going to be a chuckle. We've chosen to go with a combination of models that we haven't used before and shed tons of infantry. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we're in our brand new Sector Wargaming t-shirts. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, what was the other things we've got as well? Uh, we've got the Dice Tray 2.0. Yeah. Stealth mode. Yep. Yeah. So no more rattling around with dice on the, ta on the table. And we've also, as you can see, brand we'll new... We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Brand new, beautiful looking board. Bit darker, so it's not the same sand that we've used before. Beautiful slate, beautiful sand, and it's going to look great. We've already put some models on the table to test it out, and it looks fantastic. So the mission that we've chosen to do is we're going to go for a Dawn of War deployment and we're going to be play, playing War of Lies with a twist. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to have for the War of Lies objectives is initially we are going to have five beacons on the table. Uh, these beacons have been set by the Iron Warrior forces as they have engaged civilian aircraft, uh, civilian ships in orbit and they are trying to trick them to uh, evacuate their aircraft and get them to land on the planet so they can be easily captured. The Imperial Fists, however, mm -hmm. have got wind of this and yep. decided to come and rescue those assets. Yep, which may or may not be agents of the Sigilite. It but may, we'll they find could be out. spies of Horus, they could be anything. It could be anybody. Hence the War of Lies. So, the five objectives are beacons. On turn three, we will be scattering down five small drop pods, um, which I recently painted up. And those drop pods will be landing with a tremendous whack mm -hmm. as they will be landing with a large blast template at strength 8 AP3. Yeah. So you've got to go and get the objectives. And then hope it doesn't land on you. Hope it doesn't <laughs> land on your head. <laughs> so I think it's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be good. It's going to be good fun. Now, because the Iron Warriors will be deploying, uh, deploying the decoys, once those civilian assets are actually on the table, they are automatically going to move towards the nearest loyalist forces in that kind of, help me, I don't want to die. So, I mean, you wouldn't, would you? No, definitely not. <laughs> it's like, sh shiny metal armor, which you know are bad guys. <laughs> oh, bright metal armor, which you know are good guys. Yep. So. <laughs> and then we'll roll it guys. Up. It's the Imperium. No one's good or good bad. guys. <laughs> are we the bad <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> So we'll get the table set up and we'll get everything sorted out and we'll see you soon. Here we have 2,850 points of Iron Warriors running the Chosen Duty Right of War, which allows me to take veteran squads as core troops choices. Starting off in my fast attack selection, I have three Javelin Land Speeders. Each is equipped with two Hunter Killer Missiles and their Multi Melters. I have a Iron Havoc Squad all armed with missile launchers and the Sergeant has an Augury Scanner. My second Iron Havoc squad is all auto cannons, and again, the sergeant is equipped with an Augury scanner. I have my favorite unit, the uh, Venerable Dreadnought, not the Venerable Dreadnought, the Leviathan Dreadnought, and I'm very much looking forward to using him. I then have a tactical support, use, tactical support unit of 10 models, each equipped with their Volkite culverins, and nothing, uh, sorry, additional close combat weapons, a 15-man assault squad. Uh, the sergeant is equipped with a thunder hammer, melter bomb, and combat shield, and the unit has three power axes. Next troop choice is a five-man reconnaissance squad with recon armor, Camellio 9, and sniper rifles. These will be the troublesome ones who have deployed the beacons. My first veteran unit is a 10-man veteran unit with two rocket launchers. Uh, the sergeant is equipped with bolt pistol and power fist. I have my hardened veteran unit, the tank hunters, who are equipped with 
five combi melters and one melter gun. My third veteran's troops choices is the same as the first. So two launchers and a sergeant with a power fist and a bolt pistol. For my characters, I have my uh, Delegatus, who is carrying his Charnel Sabre and Bolt Pistol. He has Artisifer Armor and Melter Bombs. And I have my Master of Signals, who has Artisifer Armor and no other upgrades. He will be going with the Volkite Support Squad. I've chosen in typical Iron Warriors fashion not to give Artificer Armor to any model outside of the command structure. Uh, just due to the fact that the Iron Warriors are being viewed as bullets in a gun and therefore completely expendable and not worth spending the uh, the resources on to craft them artificer armour. Uh, you may notice that my Assault Squad is actually a Mark IV, which is a deviation from my usual Mark III, but I chose to put them in Mark IV primarily because it's a lighter build of armour and they would give that to the more of Assault-based troops than they would the rank-and-file fodder. And that is my 2,850 points of Iron Warriors for this game. So the unit I am looking forward to using most this game is my Leviathan Seed Dreadnought. Uh, the main reason I'm looking forward to using this today is because it is the first time I have actually fielded a Leviathan Seed Dreadnought despite having it painted for over a year. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing it tear up some Imperial Fists. Two thousand eight hundred and fifty points of Imperial Fists using the Hammerfall Protocol which allows units to be equipped with teleportation transponders which means they can deep strike onto the field. So at HQ I've got my Praetor with a, a Vigilist Pattern Storm Shield in Tartarus Armour and a Paragon Blade. For troops choices, you can see I've got two Breacher Squads, each armed the same with two Melter Guns, a Sergeant with a Thunder Hammer and Melter Bombs. Another troops choice, the Phalanx Warders at the back there, armed with, all armed with Power Axes, two of them are armed with Thunder Hammers, and the sergeant is armed with a solarite power gauntlet. In the middle there, you can see my command squad for my Terminator uh, Praetor. Uh, again, armed with thunder hammers and storm shields, because that's a very Imperial Fist thing to do, and looks great. Um, Elites-wise, you can see I've got a quad heavy bolter, which, as you know, <laughs> Imperial Fists love their heavy bolters. That plus one ballistic skill makes all the difference. I've got a Terminator Squad in Cataphracty Armour with an Assault Cannon and an Apothecarian Detachment to try and keep my breaches and Warders alive a little bit longer. Heavy Support wise, you can see I've got a Heavy Support, heavy support Squad armed with Heavy Bolters, again that plus one Blister skill, but these also get Tank Hunters as well. The Leviathan Dreadnought at the back there armed with the Siege Drill and the Grav Flux Bombard. And then finally, a Vindicator, because there's nothing better than a massive gun on the table. Now, with the Hammerfall protocol, it means all my vehicles don't turn up until the second turn as they start in reserve. But looking forward to this game, I'm going to smash some Iron Warriors in. The unit I'm most excited to use is my Phalanx Warders. One of those units which I always I tend to like to use them, but they always get battered. So hopefully I'm gonna get to see them do something really cool to this game. The power axes, the, the boarding shields, absolutely fantastic. Must take unit in an Imperial Fist army. So we're going to roll off, see who gets to deploy first, and see what happens. 
four. And I a get a six. six. Iron Warriors deploying. deploying first. Excellent. Yeah, <laughs> for me. <laughs> I have deployed my Iron Warriors. As you can see, I've gone for a nice hard front line there. So kicking off, I've got my Order Cannon Iron Havocs on the Iron Warriors right flank. I have my missile launchers in the middle, supported by a Assault Marine squad. My Leviathan Dreadnought is claiming the highest feature in the land. I'm walking over some cliffs and I have my tax support squad here um, with the Master of Signals uh, giving them their orders. In reserves, I have my two 10-man veteran squads and I have my Javelin Land Speeders, which will be outflanking and my Delegatus will be joining the six-man anti-tank squad with their Melter Guns. All will be arriving from outflank. So fingers crossed my reserve, go reserve rolls go well. Imperial Fist deployment, as you can see, I've got my Volkites over on the right hand flank here, supported by the Terminator squad with the Assault Cannon, the Command squad in the middle there, trying to keep it the, the Fearless from the banner in that nice little bubble, next to the Volkite squad, the, sorry, no, the Heavy Bolter Heavy Support squad, and the Quad Heavy Bolter. Now, what we've decided is, all of the, the rocks on here will block line of sight, but not be difficult terrain, which will make the gaming a lot easier, a lot more fun, and a bit more interesting. In reserve, I've got my Vindicator and my Leviathan coming on from my board edge, as they have to remain in reserve until the second turn. Um, I've also got the Phalanx Warders and the two Breacher teams, which will be deep striking in. The Iron Warriors Reconnaissance Squad has infiltrated onto the table. So they have made their way forward to that first objective. And also, they have a very good line of sight to the Terminator Command Squad with their sniper rifles. First turn, let's see if I can seize the initiative and get the first turn, which I do not. No seize for you! <laughs> Iron Warriors shooting phase. My Iron Havoc squad is going to engage the Volkite support squad in the far corner. Um, the entire unit can draw line of sight to at least one model. So I'll be getting those shots ready. So 20 shots with the auto cannons. So 20 shots hitting on twos because the Iron Havocs have the superior ballistic skill. So that is 18 hits. Whoa. <laughs> Here we go, and strength seven, let's see, toughness two. four, so twos to wound. Oh no, takes me down a few, so I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen wounds. Massive thirteen wounds against my, my Volt Age squad there, let's see if I can stay alive. So that's one, two, only three of them go down, which is pretty good. The Volga unit did suffer 25% casualty, so it needs to make a pinning check. Let's see if it can stay around. And it does. 
Iron Havocs with the missile launchers are going to engage the cataphractic terminators on the opposing side. Unfortunately, only seven can actually see, but they are in range. So I'm going to be opening up with seven crack missiles. So let's bring this in a shot here. There we go. So seven shots of crack missiles hitting on twos. So six hits and wounding on twos. So that will be a whopping five saving throws. Five armor saves on the cataphracty terminators to make then. And they're all right. Cataphracty plate armor surviving the day. My next shooting, I'm moving up to my reconnaissance squad. They're going to open up with their sniper rifles in an attempt to eliminate some of the commander elements um, of the Imperial Fists. So I have five shots with their sniper rifles uh, hitting on threes but obviously I have precision shot and rending so I'm going to declare that any precision shots that I actually get I'm placing on the standard There's a shock. To, <laughs> to, to eliminate to eliminate that fearless and make the imperial fist fear the yeah. iron warriors there we go. in the board account so there's two precision hits and one more hit so I roll the two precision so these are both going onto the standard bearer, wounding on a four up. So one wound on the standard bearer, and then the other one fails to wound. So one wound on the standard bearer so to save. Let's see if he saves it. He takes he a wound! Takes <laughs> a wound! Knocking the standard bearer down to one wound. The Leviathan Siege Dreadnought, with its first shots of the game ever, will be firing its Storm Frag Cannon into... The Imperial Fists quad heavy bolter knowing full well what damage it's capable of doing. So I'm going to attempt to eliminate that now. So kicking off with six shots with its quad cannon. Hitting on twos. So all but one. And strength seven versus toughness seven. Wounding on fours. See if I can't rip it to bits before it gets to even fire. So there we have four wounds at AP3. Just four wounds, isn't it? So it's four, uh, sorry, three wounds at AP3, yeah. which kills the quad gun and yeah. one of the gunners. That's it, gone. Continuing shooting after the hellish volley from the Storm Frag Cannon, I'm going to open up with its Volkites in its chest at the remaining Marine. So I have four shots twin linked. Thankful for twin linked. So yeah. all hits. All and then we go strength six against toughness four, looking at twos to wound. That's three wounds, sorry, four wounds. Four saves Let's of a three up. See if he can't actually make some saving uh, throws. Nice. Live! And he, he died! No. Gun down and obliterated by Volkite. Annihilated. My Volkite tactical support squad with the Master of Signals um, is out of range of the Heavy Bolter squad. So they will not be shooting. They're going to hold their fire for their potentially deep striking troops later on. And my 15 man assault squad is going to hold fast. I was going to run them. Um, but that would then potentially put me within charge range of those cataphractic terminators, which I don't quite fancy just yet. Uh, so I'm going to hold on for that now, and I'm going to throw them, going to commit them next turn, I think, and we'll see how that pans there. So moving straight into shooting, I've got my Volkite Caliber squad here. They have moved, but they're going to have take a shot at the Iron Havocs with the auto cannons. But because they have moved, they're shooting with snap fire. So I need three to hit as normal, which is pretty good. It's not that great, actually. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, Sixes. So yeah, so one hit. <laughs> That's right, because it's moving, so sixes. Um, threes to wound, which I don't manage to do anything. Oh, well. <laughs> the cataphractic terminator squad it's going to open fire into the assault marines because i don't want to get them in don't want them getting any closer so let's see what i can do first up the assault cannon is going to open fire with it so hitting on threes all of those hit wounding on twos but remember it's rending so any sixes so that's three wounds onto the assault onto the normal squad there onto the assault squad so three saving throws from the um from the assault squads so we have one guy down yep Next up is the the uh, combi bolters from the rest of the Terminators, hitting on twos re because of um, the bolter discipline from the Imperial Fists, and re-rolling misses because they're twin-linked. 
which is good because I did miss one. So all of those hit, but fours to wound. That's two wounds, so two more so armor two saves. Two standard armor saves, so that is two more Iron Warrior saves. So I've only lost a single assault marine from that round of shooting. Could have been better, but I'll take it. <laughs> On the right flank here, we've got the heavy support squad with the heavy bolters. Now, I've got an option here, I can either shoot at the Volkites, which is all right, but they're not any threat at the minute. The thing I'm worried about the most is that scout squad on the objective. I mean, the thing I'm worried about most is the Leviathan. However, I can't hurt the Leviathan with these. Uh, so only six of my heavy bolters can see the scouts. So I'm gonna roll all of these nice 18 shots, hitting on twos because of my bolt weapons and my bolter discipline. Stupid bolter discipline. That's a lot of ones though. Not that many ones. Four ones. And then wounding on threes. I am going to ground. <laughs> I figured you didn't might. realize that. Um, oh, that's not great either. That is two, four, six, eight wounds. So I'll take these four at a time because they basically, because they have reconnaissance armor, they only have a four up. So going to ground so. gives them a six up and then their chameleon nine gives them plus one to that. So yep. I've got a five up cover safe, so I'll do four at a time. So that's four dead. Yeah, that's four of them gone. Um, and then another four saves on the last guy. So he was close. He was close. He but was close. Absolutely annihilated. He murdered by those by heavy bolters. Heavy bolt of fire, ripping the <laughs> Iron Warriors to shreds, as is tradition. As is what should happen. <laughs> for the final part of my movement, uh, for my shooting, I've got my Tartarus squad here, my command squad, which are actually going to run to make a little bit more leeway. So Run away see. from the Leviathan. Yeah, that's pretty much how that's gonna go. Let's see how they do. An inch. <laughs> <laughs> run away, you cowards. Run, run while you can. Yeah. Typical. <laughs> So end of turn one. End of turn one. I was expecting a lot more brutality from you, to be honest. I'm quite glad I've still got stuff on the table and wasn't wiped out in the first turn. I've got, which means I can bring my stuff on to the next turn. I've got stuff out of range, mm -hmm. but I've got a lot of stuff with all risk scanners, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Levy, Beast, mm -hmm. he's going to be taking on your command squad I, next. I had a feeling like he's a coming for you. He's got to come a for you. Beautiful run of one inch there. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Fantastic. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how my reserves come on as well as yours. Mm, very, very interesting. So. Still all to play for. That's only one turn. That's just it. So, mm -hmm. start of turn two. Rolling for my reserves, I've got two 10-man veteran squads to come on. I have a six-man veteran squad with the Melters and the Delegatas to come on. And I have the Javelins. So, let's start with the two 10-man squads first. So... These two are the first two 10-man squads coming on from outflank. So one on, one off. So I'll take that. Then we've got the veteran squad with the Delegatus. They are on. And then we have um, the Javelin Land Speeders again coming on from outflank as a full squadron. So they are also on. The 10-man squad. So for this unit here, they are going to be outflanking. So one, two would be to my left. Three, four to my right, and then five and six I will pick. So the ten-man squad, I will pick. So I think they're going to be coming on this side. Great. <laughs> um, the six-man tank hunter veteran squad, they will be coming on this flank on my right side. And then finally my javelin squadron will be coming on this side as well. So it looks like I'm going heavy on the Iron Warrior's right flank. So it looks like the Imperial Fists are going to get some nasty surprises coming on. Strong, that's strong a, that's a strong right, right flank action on the Imperial Hist. So my Iron Warriors movement is done. I've moved a few units forwards and obviously gone heavy out flank on the Iron, uh, Iron Hand's right flank. Unfortunately, though, as Ian quite happily reminded me, his tactical support squad has a bolt gun and augury scanner in there. So therefore, my movement phase has been interrupted so that Ian can actually open fire with his Volkites into a unit of his choice. As Derek rightly pointed out, I do have an augury scanner in my Volkite squad. 
And given the choice of all the three units that are there, I think I'm going to shoot at the squad with the Delegatus in it. Because if I can manage to cause enough wounds, the Delegatus gives me an extra victory point because of his chosen duty right of war. Now, let's see if I can do some damage. So I've got six ball kites in there, two shots each, 12 shots, hitting on threes, which is all but three of them. Yeah. And wounding on twos, because it's strength Two, six. Strength six. Uh, that is all but one. So that is two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine wounds. And there's you thinking you only needed five dice. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll start with these. I'll do the first five. So saving on threes. Oh no. Oh no. So that is three dead. So it's three more to make. And obviously I'm taking these on the veterans again. So three dead veterans so far. That is four dead veterans. Four dead veterans. So that's four additional deflag yeah. breaks. Let's see if I can cause more wounds on them. Which I do do, so another four wounds. So another four saving throws, oh. which is all of the um, Iron Warriors uh, veterans in the anti-tank squad have been completely wiped out, leaving the Delegatus by himself. I'll take How that. However, I will point out to Ian that he's missed one thing, mm -hmm. bolt gun. Oh yeah, I've got my bolt gun as well, you're right. Which so if I'm not mistaken, hits on twos, right? Uh, I, think, I think it does. Hits on twos. It does, Dean. So... Oh well, there's a one there, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't fit, doesn't do any wounds though. Oh, there we so go. There we go. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm not. I'm quite happy with that. I'm not. <laughs> Kicking off with my veteran squad that's still alive. And they are going to be opening up with their bolt guns rapid firing into the Volkite squads in retaliation to cause as much damage as physically possible. So here we go. We're going to start with the two rocket launchers firing crack missiles because we don't like iron, we don't like Imperial Fists and they all need to die. Well, some of them don't need to die. So hitting on threes with crack missiles, that is one hit. And strength eight, AP three, one dead. That's one dead. So we will kick off with that. We'll then follow that on with um, a total of 15 shots from bolt guns and bolt pistols. So here we go. Unfortunately, I don't get the extra ability skill, but I don't need to because I'm an Iron Warrior. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, two it's not too shoddy. So six, ten hits. Ooh, that's good. So ten hits, and then we have... Oh. Oh, no. Only two wounds. Oh, no. I'll take my armor save then. It does kill one of them, though. I'll take that. So that's two dead from so that So two point. guys dead there. So the Delegatus uh, and his Valiant squad obviously got completely annihilated by the Volkites. Uh, and therefore, in traditional Iron Warrior fashion, he's going to run towards the nearest Iron Warrior unit <laughs> and try and get some protection from the vengeful Imperial Fist. So he is going to run a whopping six inches. That's how, you make, that's how you make run moves. That's rubbish. That, that's a run move. Well, you're used to it, aren't you? So, you know. <laughs> Next up, I've got my Javelin Squadron, and they're going to be rolling in, and they're going to be dropping their ordnance onto the Cataphracty Terminators there and try and cause as much damage. I'm going to reserve the Hunter Killer Missiles for once I've actually got an armoured target to actually engage. So I'm going to kick off with the six shots from the Cyclone Missile Launchers. Obviously, these are twin-linked with Grant with their Strafe and Run. So twos twin-linked. So they all hit. And Strength 8, so wounding on twos. So that is five wounds. That's five saving throws of your two up. Two plus armour Two up! Let's see if I can do it. One guy, one, get, one, guy, one guy down, and unfortunately it's the sergeant because yeah, he's the closest, the closest model. Unit. Then I've got three multi-melter shots. Obviously, I'm not fussed about melter. However, what is important he's is missing with multi-melters. Is missing with multi-melters. <laughs> multi misses. So twos to hit, one ah. miss. That's inevitable. <laughs> and looking at twos to wound, one wound. Yeah, so one four. Four in them. Let's see if I can get the invulnerable save, which I don't. So, so another one two guys down. down. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Victory! Vengeance! We like it! My first Iron Havoc squad with their auto cannons, demanding vengeance for the slaying of the hardened veteran squad. They are going to unleash everything that they have at the Volkite support squad to completely, or, or I hope, completely decimate them. So, 20 shots, Ugh. hitting on twos, Ugh. here come all the dice. Roll those ones, D. Oh, yeah. Roll those ones. I don't want to roll ones. Roll more ones. Roll more ones. <laughs> so, 16 hits. Strength 7 on toughness, 4 looking. Four more ones. Twos to wound. I don't like ones. Oh, no. So that is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 wounds. Oh, hold on. That is 14 Do saves. Do I have enough dice? Let's see if my, Volk my heroic Volkite squad can save it. 
I've got one, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, it's them dead. <laughs> Obliterized! Oh, look at all those failed armor saves. <laughs> I like failed armor saves. Tremendous. My Iron Havoc, so their missile launchers, are going to be firing their launchers into the Terminator Command Squad, uh, trying to reap as much damage as they can before the Leviathan decides to uh, stomp on them. So only eight of them can actually draw line of sight. So eight shots hitting on twos. We don't like ones. So that's six hits. And then we're looking for twos to wound. So that's all wounded. So that is a whopping six wounds. Two of armor saves away. Six wounds. Let's see if I get my armor saves. So one of them. Oh, one down. guy's dead. And Two guys down. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Master of Signals has finally had enough. He could draw line of sights to a two guys like this guy and this guy. So he's going to drop his orbital bombardment now. So I'm going to drop that template onto that unit, and I'm going to be going for his head there for five. So let's see where I get when I actually roll that scatter dice. I do actually have a scatter dice for a change. So rolling for scatter, it's going Ooh. back seven inches, but it can draw line of sight, so it's actually only going back two inches, which actually should give me more models. We'll work that out in just a moment. After working out the scatter, he moved from actually only having five models under that template to actually having six. Uh, and due to the D3 attacks, it actually got one extra template, which flipped and hit an additional three models. So I've got nine hits in total. So nine hits, murdering Imperial Fists on twos. Got those ones, D. So you can have three ones, Yay! but I would very much like six, six dead Marines. Six dead heavy ball Marines. I like it. Boo! <laughs> I was debating whether I should actually fire my Leviathan into the command squad with the Praetor. Uh, and I've made the decision that I am going to because... Charging them and crushing them in combat is one thing, but obliterating them with a shed loads of firepower is another. So I'm going to take the risk and fire everything the Leviathan's got into the command squad uh, and then hope that I can still make a charge. At the moment, that charge is nine inches, but if I kill a model, that charge then goes to, uh, sorry, it's a seven inch charge. Uh, if I kill something, then it's going to be a nine inch charge. It's going to be harder, but it's got nothing that can hurt me anyway. So I'm not really going to lose anything. So let's get on with the shooting. So kicking off with six shots from the storm frag cannon for five hits. Yeah. Looking at twos to wound. So that is five wounds. Five wounds so five two ups. Let's see if I can make this. No One guy down. down. So that does make it the nine inch charge. Damn it. Um, then I'm going to fire my Volkites, so four shots of Volkites twin linked into the unit, so they all hit. Strength six, I'm looking at twos to wound, so that is only two wounds, so two saves on your Praetor, That's being the Praetor. closest model. Let's see if he makes it, and he does, he does. and now the dastardly Melter <laughs> in the Power Fist. Well, thank you, we'll look for this one. You <laughs> might want to do a look out so hitting on a two, Molly Misser! <laughs> 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 Hold on, let me just go zoom in on that one. With the end of the shooting phase attacking my uh, cataphracty and my heavy bolt squads, causing massive damage against them, I now need leadership tests and pinning checks. So first of all, my cataphracty, unfortunately not within the six inches of the command squad's banner, so I need uh, nine or less, eight or less, because the sergeant is dead. Murdered him already. He's, they're fine. Um, a pinning test for this squad here. So, yeah. Same again. Same. Yeah, pass their pinning. Do they pass their leadership? They pass the leadership. They do. They do. The Skin of their five. teeth. So they're still in for the fight, just like good stubborn Imperial fists are. My assault marine squad is going to attempt to assault the cataphract determinators. It's a nine inch charge. Uh, so I've declared my charge. Ian will have to do his... Oh, no, they can't. can't. No one works fire charge. from you. So I'll roll that charge now. So it's a 9-inch charge with yeah. re-roll because I'm using jump packs. So come on. It's an 10 eight. Inch. So that's a fail. So come on, re-roll. An 8 again. again. No, no a jump assault this turn. Disappointing. But let's see if Mr. Leviathan can get in. Please, no. Please, yes. <laughs> so Mr. Leviathan needs to make a 9-inch charge. And obviously, he doesn't get a re-roll. So come on. 9. No. 7. No, nope, seven is not nine last time I checked, so that's two failed charges from the Iron Warriors. So I've got a lot of things coming in on reserve. I'm going to do all my deep striking stuff first. So first of all, I see my Phalanx Warders come on, which they do. The two Breacher Squads, which they also come on as well. I've got my Vindicator coming on from my board edge. 
which he comes on, and my Leviathan as well, Castilius the Unyielding. He's used a scatter dice, so <laughs> I actually use a proper dice and see if he comes on or not, which he doesn't, because he's too far scattered in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm quite pleased with that. I've actually got stuff back on the table now after that hammering of a uh, shooting phase. break up my movement just a little bit there I've got three units deep striking in I've got my, my two units of breaches and my phalanx warders now these are very dangerous places to put them in but I'm gonna to to give them a go so again as they are deep striking I need to scatter them on so this first unit of breaches let's see where they go let's see where they end up two inches so they end up there the next unit in the middle there behind the Leviathan let's see where he turns up Ooh, seven inches. So he goes to here. And then my final unit with my phalanx waters. See where they end up? Three inches, four inches. So a little bit further back, but I'm not too bad with that. None of them have died in a horrific explosion or been melted into walls or anything like that. Derek needs to make blind tests because the Hammerfall Protocol right of war means anything within 12 inches, I have to double check whether it's 12 or 6 inches, needs to take a blind test to see as the shining light of this teleportation blinds them. The arrival of the units under the right of war means that any unit within 12 inches has to take a blind test at the end of the phase. Also at the end of that phase my auger scanners would therefore kick in. So purely for the aesthetic factor, once they have arrived, I'm going to take my blind test. And obviously, if I do pass my blind test, then I will be opening fire with those said units because the aesthetic of them appearing in a blinding flash of light, throwing off all the auger scanners and everything else, and then just suddenly being there is significantly more cinematic and feels better for the actual just game. And, a cooler. <laughs> and certainly in a friendly game, that's the best way to actually go. So I'm going to take a number of blind tests, yeah. mark those units up, and then I'm going to do my auger scanners and uh, their direct effects. So we'll, so we'll start with this Iron Havoc unit here because they are well within 12 inches of that unit here. So initiative test on a five or a six, it is a fail. Fail, oh, so oh. they are blinded. It's working already, D. I don't like it. Iron Havocs with the launchers, same again. So that each unit will only take a single blind test. They are oh, fine. Ooh. The Assault Marines, Again, they are within 12 inches of, of the oh, breacher hi. unit. Ah! They are blinded. This could absolutely be utterly, utterly catastrophic for me. So moving along, um, this unit will take a blind test. Now, this is one of the units that I really need to pass to actually throw some firepower back. However, because my Master of Signals is in there and he is initiative five, I only fail on the roll of six. six. I don't want a six. Ah! No more blinding there. But with two blinded units, that is going to be catastrophic to my counter. The Leviathan needs to take a test as well, because the Melter Guns are in range, so the Leviathan is blinded. <laughs> That's what I want to see! I didn't want to see that. <laughs> and I'll look at that pout. <laughs> <laughs> right, so due to being massively blinded, my Iron Havocs here with their auto cannons are going to open it because it affects me into my last turn anyway. So I may as well fire my auto cannons, move, and then reposition and then potentially do some more damage later. So, we'll kick off with 20 shots, and despite Ballistic Skill 5, hitting on sixes. Yep. Because <laughs> they're now Ballistic Skill 1. That's right, they are. So sixes, I will take a whopping two. Ooh. Still enough, D, still enough. With one wound. I'll take that save, be fine. Yeah, you will. Moving on to my next unit, I've got my Iron Havoc launchers, uh, which are not blinded, so therefore they are going to be throwing every crack missile they can pour into that um, breacher unit there. So I have a whopping 10 shots. Yeah, this one could hurt. Hitting on twos. This, uh, this needs to hurt. Hitting on twos. Uh -oh. Wounding on. Oh, what's that? Wounding on twos. Yeah. For eight wounds eight at wounds. AP three. So in So eight so in saves. 
No, one, eight, one. So, so one, seven dead so breaches. So seven dead breaches. And I don't get my feel no pain from my apothecary because it's strength eight. So with my last interrupting augury, uh, the Volkite support squad with the augury scanner from the Master of Signals is going to dedicate their firepower to the breach unit. Now, the reason I've gone for the breach unit is because the breach unit actually poses a threat to the Leviathan Dreadnought because its rear armor is exposed and he's got two melter guns in the back of that unit with a clean line of sight. So I've decided that I'm going to go with wiping out the breaches first um, because I'm not too worried about the failings warders because they can't move this turn. Next turn I can pull back. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, 20 shots hitting on threes. Roll those ones, D. I won't wipe one. Mm. Strength six, so we're looking at twos. twos to wound. Not too bad. So that is two, four, six... 8, 10, 12 wounds of a 3 up armor save. And then hopefully we'll get some D flag. 1s and 2s, 1s and 2s. 3 plus. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, we like it. We like it a lot. Got a lot of 1s. However, I've got apothecaries. No, not the so apothecaries. 5s and 6s, they've got feel no pain. That is not five and six. <laughs> <laughs> no, feel no pain that for you. Seven more dead, though. So seven dead, and then D flag. Oh, so D flag. So D flag. So twos again. That's another six wounds. Hold on, hold on. This could do it. Another two more there. Feel no pains. Pain. One. Oh, so another one dies. So only eight dead. Only right eight. There. Eight dead. Uh, oh, 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 I might have, blind, might have blinded half my army, but you know what? Eight dead. I'll take it. Well, that didn't go to plan. The blinding worked really well. It's a very risky shot. However, the amount of firepower from these augury scanners have decimated those two units. So I now need to take my panic test to see if they run away. So the unit on the far side there with the breaches with remaining, let's see if there's stick around. They don't. They make a run for it. And they are running away. They're running five inches away. So we'll do that in a moment. And then this unit here, which is reduced down to the last few, pass. Don't know how, but the Imperial Fist right there. All they play for. My Fairlands like Warders, still good though. <laughs> <laughs> To actually go into my shooting phase, <laughs> is a, again, that was a lot of shooting done at me in my own movement phase. But good things come to those who wait, because I've got my Vindicator now, and there's a big wedge of assault marines right there. Now I've put the template on, I just need to scatter it. So at the minute, I'm getting seven marines. So it's a hit. So I get seven marines there. Seven. That is seven dead marines. Seven dead marines. No two ways about that. Boom. And then my Pintle Mountain Combi Bolter as well, hitting on threes because it doesn't have the Legion of Stardis rule. So it hits and wounds one of them. So you can take out another one. No. No. Not. Cataphracty Terminators are going to try and use the Assault Cannon to take out the Javelin that have come in, come in from the flank there. Now, the only thing that can actually hurt it is the, the Assault Cannon. So I'm hitting on threes. I am not drinking. Oh my god, come on lads. Come on lads. Two hits. I've got to rely on... So it's fives. No it's not. Yes it is. It's fives to glance and sixes to penetrate, but with rending. So unfortunately not doing anything. <laughs> Unfortunate. That is a shame. The unit of breaches that failed their panic test and take some snapshots as they're, as they're fleeing back to the lines at no the way. javelins. The, the melter gun is in range, but I need a six to hit. Which it doesn't. Next up, I've got my heavy bolter squad here. Now, the only thing that they can really do any damage against, I've tried, I thought first against the veterans, but they're not in range. So they're gonna open up on the Volkite squad in front of them there. They are all in range. Let's see what they do. Hitting on twos because of bolt weapons. That is all of them. Blah. Too many shots. That's a lot of shots. And then wounding on threes. Let's get rid of them. That is six, seven wounds. So seven three plus arms. Seven three ups. How many have I lost? I've lost three. Three die. So three, three die. Down. I'll take that. It's the most efficient shooting I've done so far, other than the Vindicator. The other devastated breacher squad, the one that stuck around, is going to take a shot with its melter gun at the back of the Leviathan. 
Now, we all know how notoriously bad melter guns are, so hopefully I'm going to hit it and do some damage. Let's gonna find miss. out. It's going to miss. It didn't. Oh, it has hit. hit. But I'm going to get one dice because it's not within double range. And that is a penetrating it's hit. A penetrating hit. I will take my four invulnerable yeah. save and roll? fail, so roll your damage. Let's see what happens. Four on a table, which is immobilized, isn't it? No, it's five. So it's, it's stunned. So it's stunned, that's right. So the unit is, so the, the Leviathan is blinded and stunned now. Now the Phalanx Warders, they don't have any major offensive weapons. They've only got bolt pistols on them. Um, as they've come down, they're gonna open up with their bolt pistols onto the Volkite squad. So as they are bolt weapons, I'm hitting on twos. Let's see what I do. It's two of them actually miss. I'm forced to wound against the Volkite squad. That is three wounds. So three armor saves. So three armor saves with three up. Fine. All fine. Totally fine. Nothing to worry about. Not the best turn in the world, but the blinding mechanic and the, the deep striking is a very interesting mechanic, and I quite like how it worked. If only there was no ogre scanners to annihilate things which got in the way. So end of turn two. Some horrific things going on right there. I am not night lighting ogre scanners. The amount of firepower you can put up in my movement phase on my deep strike <laughs> is insane. I think it's one of those things with the aesthetic between you deep striking in mm -hmm. and using that blind ability, which obviously no one else really has access yeah. to. It's literally uh, an Imperial Fist right of war, but that aesthetically yeah. is absolutely, absolutely. amazing. And this, you, like, I was, like I was saying though, this is the first time I've actually used this uh, hammer, hammer Force Strike Force right of war altogether. So it was really nice to see how it happened. I'm really glad you failed some of the blind tests. I'm shocked. More, than I, more I'm sh than I was expecting as I'm, well. I'm shocked that I've uh, failed so many blind tests. But not only that is obviously me, me Leviathan's now blinded. That's not going to help matters. One of my Iron Havoc squads is now blinded. But now I'll live with that. Yeah. I suppose we'll find out. But no, the, the, the whole deep striking and blind thing. And obviously we've gone with the aesthetic. I mean, you could argue that... Your augury scanner was kicking yeah, before the thing, the but then you could argue that it's a blinding flash of yeah. material of uh, electromagnetic light, which scrambles augury scanners, yeah. and they would blind the augury scanner. And it's the augury scanner that gives you the ability. Yeah. Not to mention the blinding flash. Yeah. So, all the rest of it. so we're going with the aesthetics here. So. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And um, like just the amount of firepower you can throw oh. out as well, especially so close to this table edge. I mean, you've got to bear in mind that my entire flat, uh, my entire deployment area is covered with augury scanners, rocket launchers, auto cannons, and volkite yeah. cavalers. Yeah, and so. that is that is absolutely brutal as Again, a base it's, defense. It's line. one of those things where you've got a nice um, mix of defensive stuff for your backline, yeah. but also. That massive unit of assault marines was very, very threatening. There's a reason it got vindicated. There's a reason, absolutely <laughs> there's a reason it got vindicated. That is a much more reasonable amount. And yet, it's still too many Iron Warrior assault marines. Just it. And you've still got another a veteran squad to outflank to come on as got well. A veteran squad to outflank. So, um, but yes. Once again, back to the Imperial Fists of being to the last man and fighting tooth and nail, <laughs> stubbornly, yeah. the way they do. That's just it. Yeah. And obviously we're moving on to turn three, so with our I mean, unique... only two turns! I know. Um, moving on to turn three, we've actually got the deployment of the drop pods. So what we're going to do is we are going to get the drop pods out. We are going to do it all on camera so you can see where they're going to come down because remember that these <laughs> are coming down with effectively the same impact as an orbital strike. So they are hitting the table at Mac AP3 yeah. strength eight yeah. with a large blast template. So there be. are no friends in throw. It's going to yeah. be brutal. The other thing as well is you're still very close to a lot of these impact sites. So, so are you! Very true. I think you are more likely... But this one, uh, it's, it's all to play for. <laughs> <laughs> we can theory about it all alike, but it's still going. So let's get back to rolling some dice and we'll see where these drop pods come on. <laughs> so beginning of turn three, as arranged per the uh, modified mission scenario we are going to drop in the five drop the five escape pods with the high value targets in them so we're going to work our way up the board doing one at a time we will work out the impacts as we go along and then i'll roll for my reserves as i begin my third turn so for the first drop pod we've got the marker there so for the first drop pod it is going to these will be full scatter regardless it's going six inches away so the first drop pod is going to land there 
Drop pod number two is going to be coming down here, and obviously this is quite a dangerous place for me because I've got quite a few troops in the area. But, but hopefully um, it might hit some of them. So and hopefully it might scatter over towards the uh, yeah, Imperial yeah, Fist. No, we don't want so that. let's see where it scatters to this time. Obviously we will work out these hits off camera and let you know exactly how much damage they, they cause. So that is, you can see the scatter dice, that's coming seven inches oh. straight towards my Iron Havocs. So that is landing right there. Uh-oh. So that's, that's what I want to see. That's not what I wanted to see, and we'll work out those hits in just a moment. Let's see if this orbital strike from the drop pod can cause some damage. Now, unfortunately, only three of them have been hit under the template of this uh, this blast marker from the thing from the uh, drop pod. Let's see if I can get any of them though. So I need two to kill them. That's three <laughs> dead iron havocs, which I am pleased with. Drop pod number three. Has it got happy news or has it got bad news? Let's find out. Hopefully it'll hit the Leviathan. So as you can see, here is the marker itself. And then that is going to scatter uh, into the Imperial Fists. So it's actually coming back about oh. three inches away. And I don't believe that will impact anyone. Drop pod number four. Here it comes. Now, unfortunately, no one's very close to it. But that doesn't mean necessarily it won't cause any damage. Say, let's, go, let's go big scatter. Let's go scatter. Big the scatter onto the Leviathan. Or not far off it. Let's Ooh. check that. So we've got a seven inch move. It's going to land. That's going to hit the Leviathan. Yes, it is. So in goes the drop pod. And let's see if I can cause some damage to it. And without a doubt, that is hitting, that is hitting the side armor. armor of the levy. So side armor. And remember, it's ordnance, so it's 2d6 and pick the highest. Helps if I don't pick a sky dice, though. See? That is a six. That is a penetrating hit. So a penetrating hit and a four of invern. Which it fails, roll the damage. Which does too, so it's shaking. <laughs> the fifth and final drop pod of doom. The marker is here, so we've got a good chance of scattering towards well, Iron Warriors. Or look how tight those phalanx borders are. It's almost like they deep struck in. It's almost like they want to die. No, it's going to go onto those, those Volkite squad there. So, let us roll this scatter. I want those guys. Ah, oh, oh, no. The Templars. Going eight inches straight down, and it is going to land there. And as you can clearly see, it's not going to hit anyone from there. Unfortunate for you, D. But very good. Very good indeed. I now mean, I got three iron habits and a hull point for nothing. <laughs> I'm going to take that. <laughs> I would take that as well, mate. Now that the death pods, sorry, drop pods have arrived. Uh, I'll be rolling for my final reserve as my uh, final uh, veteran squad will be arriving from my outflank. So, uh, let's see if they arrive on a three. They fail to arrive. Ooh. Again, that's rather annoying, but not necessarily because I've got plenty of objectives to catch and it's all still to play for. So, we're going to get stuck in. I'll get the movement done and we'll take it from there. So moving on to my shooting, uh, my Volkite support squad has moved along uh, and what I'm going to do with those is they are going to open up with their bolt pistols. So I've got eight, well, I'll do the seven guys with their bolt pistols first and they are going to be firing at the remnant of that uh, breacher unit to see if they can't take them down. So the Master of Signals will be giving them plus one ballistic skill uh, in lieu of his own shooting. So therefore they will be ballistic skill five. So. Uh, seven shots hitting on uh, twos, so five hits, and then strength four, toughness four, wounding on fours for two wounds, so, so three the armor saves. The closest one is the sergeant with the artificial armor though, so I need to get him first. So first armor save, he's fine, second armor save is also fine. And the last one, because you got three. Oh, you got three, did you? And the last one fails, but, but feel no pain from this veteran. He doesn't, so the sergeant gets taken out. Iron Havoc unit here is going to fire. Now, you may notice that I've had to reposition due to that massive orbital bombardment. Sorry, 
Drop pod, drop pod that arrived and annihilated three of my men. Accidental drop um, pod. So I have three models that will be snap firing and three models which have line of sight, which are on full ballistic skill because my what remaining are you shooting guys, at D? I'm shooting at the Vindicator. There's a shark. <laughs> shark. So I'm engaging the Vindicator, so I'll do the three shots that are hitting on twos and then I will do the snap shot. Cool. So three shots on twos, all hit. Uh. Snap shots, no hits. So... Three tank hunting missiles. Mm -hmm. Front armor is 13. Yeah. So I'm looking at um, fives, and fives and sixes. So come on, fives and sixes with tank hunter. No, come on, tank hunter. One oh glancing God. hit. So only one glancing hit. We'll take it as it is. I've got other things to deal with that. My Iron Havocs with their auto cannons are going to use their bolt pistols because they use their auto cannons with their auger scanner. So they will be using their bolt pistols to engage those uh, breaches who are presently fleeing and uh, but obviously they are still blinded therefore i will be hitting on sixes so come on those sixes uh Ooh. five sixes i'll take yes. that i'll take five sixes what is that uh and then forced wound so two wounds so two saves and it looks like the sergeant is the closest yeah so artificer armor again he saves fine. he that's saves fine. and that's it still alive still running away though <laughs> My Javelin Squadron are going to be firing their Hunter Killer Missiles and their Cyclone Missile Launchers at the Vindicator hiding at the back there because I want to deal with that now whilst I can. So, first things first, six shots from the Twin Link Cyclone Missile Launchers, so hitting on twos with reroll, which apparently I need. Oh, wow. So, all hit, and then the six shots which are not Twin Linked but still hitting on twos. So, that's a, a total of ten hits. So, ten hits at strength eight. So fives um, and sixes again. So fives and sixes again. So fives and sixes there. So it's gone. <laughs> so it's, a, it's gone. And I can't blow it up. Yeah. Um, so that is one Vindicator destroyed and a threat annihilated. I finally decided that my assault marine squad, I could sit on the objective um, or I could deal with these marines here. So I'm electing to deal with those Marines there. So I am going to charge. They haven't used the jump packs yet, so I'll be doing a direct charge. It's a seven inch charge. We've already measured it. So seven inch charge with reroll. It's a fail. Mm -hmm. So with reroll, come on, actually get into combat. Yes, Let's do. Nine inches. So we'll get those moved in and we'll get some Hammer of Wrath off and we'll start stamping those Imperial fists into the ground. Before they charge in there, I do get my overwatch. Now there's only two Marines left. An apothecary with a bolt pistol and a melter gun. So let's see what they can do. Hopefully this melter gun can do something unlike Derek's melter gun. It does not. No. <laughs> the bolt pistol from the apothecary though also does nothing. So there we go. Getting assaulted by that assault squad. Waiting for the hammer of wrath and the multitude of attacks coming in there. Let's see if my breaches can stave them off. Two hammer of wrath attacks going in first at initiative 10. So two strength four hits. So no wounds for the hammer of wrath attacks. Moving swiftly on to initiative step four, I have got two Marines that are in combat, sorry, three Marines that are in range, so I get a six attacks in total. However, because he, there is a breaching shield in the unit, obviously the unit is collectively has defensive grenades, so I don't get my charge back. That's right, they do. So I've still got six attacks from the two standard guys. So hitting on th uh, fours, so five hits, and then strength four, wounding on fours, only one wound, so Let's one see, save, save which he does. And then we'll move on to the Imperial Fists attacks back. So I need to, when the combat is declared, I need to issue a challenge with any characters. Now the Apothecary is a character. Now, as you may have noticed, this assault squad does not have a sergeant in it. There was, had a slight in incident with a Vindicator. <laughs> so with that de declaring a challenge, no one can accept it. I get my attacks back at initiative step four. So. I get two attacks from the sergeant, uh, from the uh, apothecary, and an additional attack from the breacher. So three attacks, hitting on fours. So that's two of them. Wounding on fours to nothing. No wounds. So finally, as part of that combat, going at initiative step one are the two guys with power axes. So two guys with power axes hitting on uh, fours. So all oh, hits. Oh no! And obviously <laughs> plus one strength. So three. strength five, murderizing on two. Uh, sorry, murderizing three. on threes. But they do have invuns and oh no! So only two wounds. Yeah. So I get so, two in, so one invulnerable. I'll do the one at a time though. So do the invuns guy so first. So he fails. Feel no pain. pain. He, he lives. 
Next, Next one. one. Passes. No, he doesn't Pass, fail. No, yes. he passes because it's five, it's in, five combat. in combat. That so, is no casualties. Combat is a draw. Bugger. I've got one more set of reserves. Castellius the Unyielding, the Leviathan. Let's see if he can actually turn up and show up on the battlefield. And he doesn't! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, not for you. That scatter again. I've also got my unit of Breachers, which are running away. Let's see if they can rally. Which they do, so they're actually able to do something this turn. Kicking off with the Imperial Fist shooting, I've got my Cataphractic Terminator squad going to open up into the veterans here. Now they're within 12 inches, so they've got their, their combi bolters with firing two shots. I've also got the assault cannon still. So, combi bolters first, hitting on twos. Good job, it's twin linked. Well, almost good job, it's twin linked. And then, four, forced wound, one wound from the veterans there. And then the assault cannon, hitting on threes and wounding on twos. That's another four, three. So that's what? Four altogether. Four armor saves. So four armor saves. I've got no one important close by, so four saves of a three up. I'll take that. So two Iron Warriors die. The unit of breaches that have rallied there uh, can only snap fire this time, so I'm only hitting on sixes against the auto cannons this time. Uh, so I've got four shots, two from a bolter, two from the two bolt pistols in there. So nothing from that. And then I've got the melt, melt the gun as well, which doesn't do anything either. Yay! The uh, heavy bolt, heavy weapon squad. Now they have moved, so they are snap shooting as well. But they're going to take aim at the iron havocs over on the other side. Let's see if we can take some of them down from snap firing. There's a lot of shots, so hoping the numbers do me proud. That is one. <laughs> Better than none. Better than no. One, which has wounded. So saving on a tree up. Yeah. Tree up is a save. It's enough to do nothing. We like nothing. Boo is what I say. The Phalanx Warders, seeing an opportunity to try and strike it the, and save their Breacher friends, are going to try and assault into that unit of Assault Marines. So it's five inches away, I've got to see how I can make it, which I do quite easily. So with the Phalanx Warders charge into that melee there, at initiative step four, it's the Assault Marines and the Breachers to go first. So first to go, I've got four, three attacks altogether from the Apothecary and the Lone Breacher that's remaining. Now, we forgot this last time, but they're still being affected by Blind. So I'm actually hitting them on threes, which will do. And then wounding on fours. So that's one wound against the Assault Marines from the Breacher Squad. Well, one save, which you make. Nice. So I will be going back with my eight attacks from, my, from the Iron Warriors. Obviously, I am hitting on fives because I am still blinded. So that is a lovely four hits. I'll take that. So four hits. Let's see if I can turn those into four wounds. Fours to wound. So two wounds, two saving throws against the breacher unit. Yeah, so two saves. One failed. So, so I get feel no pain, pain. Which he doesn't. So the breacher actually goes down. The phalanx warders moving in initiative step one. They've moved the three inches to consolidate into combat. So they're more or less in combat with literally everyone there. I've got seven of them on with power axes, so this could do a lot of damage. Now they're still blinded, so they're still only weapon skill one, so I'm hitting them on threes. Which is not as good, but I am wounding on threes as well. Murdering. Sorry, I have murdering them on threes. Oh, D, you had to say it, didn't you? <laughs> Thanks. Love it. That is four of them dead, though. However, I will get my four attacks back. So my four attacks back results in zero hits. I've, I've also got two Thunderhammers in the squad, Blah. which get to fight as well. So they get their two, four attacks from there, hitting on threes. That's what I like to see. Two's the murder. That is three more dead. So that is the squad, the squad wiped hit. out. And the sergeant didn't even get the fight, use his Solarite power gauntlet. On the other side of the battlefield, the Terminators are going to attempt a long bomb charge into the unit of veterans as well. Now it is nine inches away, so it is entirely relying on these dice. And the dice gods look and see what they say. So anything nine or more, that's a 10, 11, they're in. 
Are they though? Because I get my Overwatch. You do get your Overwatch, that's very true. My 10 shots from bolt pistols and bolters and rapid firing. So these are my bolters and bolt pistols firing first. So six is to hit. That is three hits. Not a bad start. And needing four to wound. Two wounds. So two saves yeah, of a save. two up. Oh no! Oh! Which means the charge is now a failure as well. However, to add insult to misery, I will be throwing the two crack missiles at them as well. Two hits! Wow! Two, hits two crack missiles! Blood off! <laughs> Okay, so here we go. So two's to wound, two wounds, two more saving throws. And another one, guys! Oh, no. <laughs> How try, do with that? Try and charge iron more easily, yeah? I don't Son think so. Of a bitch. <laughs> that didn't go to plan. Fortunately, though, because he's within six inches of the banner from the command squad, he's fearless, so he's not running anywhere. However, two terminators for nothing is horrendous. Oh, I love it. Absolutely horrendous. But it's a dice game. <laughs> End of turn three, then. How do I cope with now? Uh, well, <laughs> it's all fine and dandy when it works. Oh, my word. All the snapshots I've managed to fail this I, game. Oh, I, my God. I am so glad that was on camera. I bet. I bet you are. <laughs> I am so glad that was caught on camera. I, was I am not going to lie. You know, I was there with me, proper smug as hell. I was like, I've got a charge in. Long bomb charge against that unit. Excellent. Murdered. No. Murdered. And the Terminators. Yeah. It's horrendous. Horrendous. Oh. Absolutely horrific. And you've still got another veteran squad to come on. I've got well. another veteran squad to come on. I've got my levy um, to come on. Who hopefully might deal with your levy? Oh, it's going to be a levy off. We could do with a levy off. Could do with a levy off. Mm -hmm. I think that might be good. Rock and sock. Although, to be fair, due to being melted in the back eh. and uh, having a drop pod fall on him and losing eh. half of his hull points has pretty much crippled him at the minute. What a shame. Boo hoo. What a shame. Oh. Dirty Iron Warrior. For it's now. also a first game model syndrome as well. It is, yes, so, you're absolutely so, right. To be fair, he survived a lot longer than most first models. He's not actually game. dead yet. Yeah? He's not actually yeah. dead yet. Same with your javelins. Although, to be fair, I'm wishing I brought the javelins as, as three separate, but I think that probably would have been too much. That's a bit horrendous, even but. for you. <sighs> Beard Lord. <laughs> but no, um, I feel a bit more confident over here. Depends what the Volkite do. Volkite can be a lot very devastating and just... You need to roll badly for them, D. Mm, yeah, but this thing, they, they're not blinded, and yeah. there's a master of signals who can just turn around and go, let's make them BS5! Yeah, so that could be very dangerous for them. Uh, again, if I could make some armor saves, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. would be great! Yeah, and we've got my veteran squad still to come on, which That's is a guaranteed good. arrival. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Levy, obviously, your Levy's on next turn, yeah. to be nice, but um, the beginning of turn four is when the civilians will be disembarking from their drop pods and making their way to the nearest friendly um, iron war uh, sorry, the nearest the friendly, friendly iron warrior. Yeah, yeah, we're friendly. <laughs> uh, to the nearest um, friendly Imperial Fist unit. Um, and then after that, that's basically them going to be standing there going, help me, help me, I don't want to die. <laughs> that's fair. Um, uh, so we'll deploy those. You'll see where they go when we actually move them on the table during my movement and um, we'll get into turn four. So each of these drop pods is now going to disembark their cargo. So from drop pod five, they're going to move towards the nearest friendly unit, which is going to basically move that objective out of there and straight towards the Imperial Fists as a friendly element. Screaming, save me, save me. Drop pod four is obviously going to be going straight backwards towards the heavy bolters. Drop pod three is going to move towards the lone apothecary who is technically still classified as a troops choice because he was allocated to a troops choice. So that's drop pod three done. Drop pod four is captured. Drop pod two. Sorry, drop pod two has been captured. The Iron Warriors are not letting him go anywhere. Oh, I see you take the one that you really like as well. Oh yeah, totally, <laughs> my favorite all. And then finally, drop pod one is gonna be moving six inches straight towards um, the Terminator with the assault cannon in a vain hope that he might actually be saved. Final unit, which will be arriving automatically due to turn four. My veteran squad will be out flanking, so we're going to go one, two to my left, three, four to my right, five, six. I click. I either want a one or a two or a five or six because I am desperate to get a veteran unit on my left flank. So come on. I pick oh. veteran unit on my left oh, flank. There they are. So let's have those failings warders. Arr.
Kicking off my shooting with my veteran squad that's advanced towards the objective there, despite the fact he ran out the drop, uh, the drop pod and ran away um, to the Imperial Fist Counterfracted Terminator. I'm going to start the shooting with my Delegatus and his bolt pistol. So firing his bolt pistol at the Counterfracted at Ballistic Skill 5. So twos, it's a hit. And looking at falls to wound, so fails to wound. Moving swiftly on, the rest of the squad is going to follow by example. I've got three guys rapid firing, at everyone else is at long range or just within pistol range. So these guys are hitting on threes, not too shoddy. And then we're going to be wounding on fours, so wounding on fours for five wounds. So five, five saves wounds, on the Cataphractic Terminator. On the He's, He's down. down! I don't even need to fire the missile launchers. Down so Cataphractic Terminator down. Next to shoot will be my land speeder squadron. They are going to open up onto the command squad. Now, all the multi melters are now actually in range. Uh, so, I'm going to be trying to delete and murder the, uh, the Praetor leading this vanguard. So, I have three shots with multi misses. Yeah. Hitting on twos. Rolls on deep. There's a one. Yeah. You can have one. Wounding on twos. That is two wounds. So, first, so, invulnerable save on the banner bearer. So, on a five up. He's dead. And then the Praetor, three plus, is fine. He's absolutely fine because of his storm shield. The six uh, twin-linked missiles uh, hitting on twos, re-rolling. So re-rolling one, oh, still a miss. So five hits, needing twos to wound. Uh, that's devastating, only two wounds. Still but only but only one needs to get through. So two saves so of two. your two up or dead. Oh, He's come dead. on! <laughs> what? Crack missile to the face. The Legion Praetor is pinned down and then completely annihilated by crack missile fire. The Iron Havocs now no longer blinded. I leveled their auto cannons at the remaining four breaches, three breaches, and their apothecary in an attempt to tear them to pieces with light anti tank. So hitting on twos. Well, there's your ones. You just need to roll more of them, Dean. More ones. More ones. I don't want to roll more ones. Apparently, I'm rolling both of our ones. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got strength seven, toughness four. So we're looking at twos to wound. There's a couple of more ones. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve wounds. Oh, hold on, then. So then twelve then. wounds. You might want to take these a couple at a time because yeah. it is. Well, hold on, then. Oh, um, let's get the tape measure out. Three inches. Three inches. All right. Oh. So I'll do two at a time. But he's got his he's two got up. That armor. So two up. Two up. He's dead. dead. Feel no pain. Feel no pain from the apothecary. No. Fails. He dies. Um. So he's dead. That was two. So that was two. You may as well do the other ten. Ten. Yeah. Because now there is no two up. Two up saving throws. Prepare to die, yeah. Imperial fist scum. They're going down like. That is, that is a lot more than I wanted. So, feel no pains. So Don't forget those feel no pains. Oh, they wiped Everyone's out. Dead. Everyone's gone. Gone down with a hail of oh, horrific God. firepower from the auto cannon Havocs. Come on. My Iron Havocs with their missile launchers. Now, I was going to aim at the Apothecary, but the Apothecary has gone to ground, literally. I cannot draw a line of sight to him at all from my launchers. Uh, so the launchers have gone for a secondary target of the uh, heavy bolters over there in the corner. So I can only see with six models, but he will be gaining a cover save because I'm effectively shooting through the legs of my Leviathan Treadnought. So they are going to get a five up cover save and they're probably going to need it. So six shots hitting on twos, all hit, wounding on twos, five wounds. So five saves are a five up or death. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, three die. Three of them die. That means one of them left. And my attack support with their Volkites and the Master of Signals. The Master of Signals has given them the order to open fire on the very close uh, Phalanx Warder. And they're going to open fire in vengeance of them destroying their Assault Squad. So I've got 14 shots at Ballistic Skill 5. So twos. That is not too bad. So 12 hits. Twos again. So that is a whopping 10 wounds. So 10 saves. So we have a 10 saves this time. Let's see if we can do some depths. Re reduce the armor saves. Sorry. Actually make the armor saves. Uh, so that's one. Two fails. But I've got feel no pain. no pain. She fails, fails both of. So 
two deflag. That is two more wounds from the Volkites. And two more saves. Both yeah. saves. So two guys die from the Volkite fire from the attack support squad. It's a start. Final veteran unit. Uh, they've just moved on the table, so they are at long range with their bolt guns, but I do have two missile launchers. So kicking off with seven shots from bolt guns. Hitting on threes, I'll take that. And then wounding on fours. Oh yes, here we go. So that is five saving throws of a three up, and then you feel no pain. Yeah, let's see if I can stay alive. Oh, two of them. Do feel no pains. I he saves one, one so one, one guy more. dies. Then I mean, instantly after that volley of fire, in come the crack missiles for one hit and one more wounded so because a vulnerable save from the breaching shields, which fails. fails. So that's another one dead, unfortunately. So three dead fists to the Leviathan Dreadnought. I had the option of going for the uh, warders behind me, but I've decided I wanted to kill and murder this lone Imperial fist with this heavy bolter. So opening up with his storm frag cannon first, six shots hitting on twos because I'm no longer blinded. So that is five hits. See if I can't tear him to pieces. That is four wounds. I'm assuming he's got artists for armor. He does. Well, I'll say four saves of your two up. Let's see if he can make it. He does not. He does not. He goes down he to is one. Torn apart. As you can see, it's not going well. It's not going well. But I'm going to start opening with my shooting from the Leviathan who finally decided to turn up. He's got the Graf Flux Bombard and he's going to take a shot at the other Leviathan. It is a risk, but we'll see what happens. So as you can see, it's hitting him. Let's see if it scatters. Uh, no. BS5, no it scatter. directly hits him. So its strength is 3d6 because it's a weird Graf Flux Bombard thing. Let's see if I can get through the armor. Uh, four, seven. 10, strength 10, so it fails. It fails to get through the yes, armor. It fails to get through any armor. It does have a melter gun though, which is in range. So we'll take that. Melter gun, see if it hits, which it does. I don't have armored ceramide. It doesn't do anything though, <laughs> which is about right. And then. That's the it. Volkite can't do anything, and that's it from a Leviathan. Moving on to the Phalanx Warders, before they get stuck in, they're going to open fire with their bolt pistols. So seven of them left, including the Apothecary. Two's to hit. Of course, I rolled two ones there. Great. And fours to wound. It's not bad. Three wounds. I'll take them. So three armor saves on the Volkite squads. So three saves on the Volkites. I'm going to roll this three times. So first one saves. Oh. Second one oh. fails. Third one ah, saves. So Boom. one model down. Lone Apothecary from the De Devastated Breacher squad firing a one off bolt pistol into the Volkite squad as well. Let's see if he can do some damage in vengeance. Nope! Too scared, no. hiding in a corner. I've declared the charge into that Volkite squad with the uh, the Phalanx Warders. However, these got his Overwatch again. We've also seen uh, how horrendous yeah. they are. So here we go. I've got 14 shots with Volkites, and then I'll have a single shot from the Master of Signals with his bolt pistol. So six is to hit. I two. Can see two sixes, so that no, was that yeah, two, two, yeah, two sixes, so two sixes, and then wounding on twos, so Wait, that two is wounds. two wounds, which kills, kills what? Uh, kills three, okay. three. It's fine. fine. So no deflag right there, and then the master of signals with his bolt pistol, he misses. And so charging, now, charging, gets well in there. Shockingly, shockingly, <laughs> they're in. Yep. The master of signals will be fighting first at initiative five. He doesn't have any additional close combat weapons, so he's only got his stock equipment. So that is uh, four attacks. Sorry, no, three attacks. Let me do that again. So three attacks for a single hit and four to wound, one wound. Let's see if my armor can protect me, which, which it does. does. And then I'm down to my 14 attacks from and the troops set four. with their additional close combat weapons. So fours to hit, not great. Oh, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. And I'm not, that's only four hits. So four hits and then four wounds, so four saving throws. Let's see if we can do this. 
Oh no, so two fail, but feel, feel no pain. pain. One, one guy dies. Only one. So also at initiative step four, I've got my apothecary in there, getting stuck in. He's got three attacks, so two normally, sorry, one normally, plus one for two close combat and then charging in as well. So hitting on fours, which is one hit, and then wounding on fours, which is one wound as well. So one wound, one armor save from the Iron Warriors, which he saves. Now, moving on to initiative step one. Four Phalanx Warders with Power Axes, so they're next to go. So hitting on threes. Sorry, hitting on fours, apologies. So all of those, and then wounding and killing on far on threes. That's what I like to see. Oh, six six dead. dead. I've then got initiative step one as well. I've got a Thunder Hammer there. Who gets two attacks for charging in, but managed to miss both of them. And then finally, the sergeant gets to use his Solarite Power Gauntlet, who gets two attacks basic, plus one for charging, so he's got three attacks. Oh no! Hitting on, killing on two, so that's another dead. So it's seven dead altogether. Seven dead. Nice. Finally, the Imperial Fits have had enough of the Iron Warrior's firepower and have finally managed to close with and kill the entire unit, leaving the Master of Signals left alive. So he now needs to pass his leadership test at minus seven. So I need to pass a double one or he's running off the board. He's definitely running. So he's now going to run off the table, or is he? Let's have a look. How far does he run? He runs a whopping ten inches. Tactical withdrawal. He's away. He's away. He's going back to get the bigger guns. <laughs> he's not having it. It's not over yet. End of turn four. I have been brutalized. <laughs> some horrific dice rolling there. I think you'll agree. I have some great dice rolling. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> some horrendous dice rolling there. Imperial Fist not giving up quite yet. I've still got technically three units left. The levy's going to do something, hopefully. I've got my Phalanx Warders and my Lone Apothecary with that objective. And again, it, it's an objective-based game, so... It's all about the objectives. Yeah, it's all about that. It's all about the objectives, especially in more alive. Mm. Um, where, you know, you could think you've got the best guys in the world, but in fact, no. no, no they're they're brain dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. advanced some of my Iron Warrior order, uh, Iron Habits and they have decided to take up a heavy supports position um, to bring a bead onto that Leviathan Dreadnought. Now, seven of them are moved so they're snap firing but three are on full ballistic skill. So they're going to open up onto the Leviathan Dreadnought in a vain hope to try and cause some hull points and perhaps distract it from the other Leviathan that's basically turned its back on it because it deems it not a threat. So we will start with the 14 shots from the auto cannons with snapshots of hitting on sixes, well there's two. Now I am only glancing on a six due to the armor 13 on the front, but I do have tank hunter. So sixes, and there's one glance, another six, there's another one. Sod so you is, fluky get. You lucky. You fluky get. So I get my invulnerable save. Two four invuns. Which I make one, but one, one goes, goes through. through. And then I have the six shots at full ballistic skill. So twos to hit. All hit. Mm -hmm. Six is to glance. Nothing. So nothing. But, but tank hunter. Tank hunter. So nothing. Ooh. So only the one hull point. A little bit disappointing, but one hull point is better than no hull point. So my next shooting, primary target now is the phalanx warders. So my javelins have moved around and repositioned so that they can get some shots down. But due to them being partly obscured, we are going to give a five up cover save for that. So. The first four shots will be hitting on twos, but will be giving cover saves. And the last two shots will not be giving cover saves. So, twos to hit, all hit. Twos to wound, that is three wounds. So, so three cover ups. saves. So, two, two guys save, one guy dies. And then the last two missiles, that is two hits. And, and no double one. one! That's what I like to see. You should have been rolling. Oh, no. that. One's 
Come by Iron Havoc, so we've got three launches that can draw line of sight to the Phalanx Warders, so they're going to open it with three crack missiles. Unfortunately for me, the Sergeant is the closest model with his Artisifer armor. So first things first, three shots hitting on twos, all hit, wounding on twos, two wounds. So first one, it's fine. Second one, also fine. So the vibe from Dreadnought has decided he's had enough, so he's going to open up with his Storm Frag Cannon straight into that unit. So six shots with it. Storm Frag Cannon hitting on twos, so that is all hits. A wounding on twos, so that is two, four, six saves. Now the Sergeant is still the closest he model. It is, so let's try this one at a time. First one, second one, fourth. Ah, feel no pain though. Feel no pain. He's dead. Fail, so he dies. And then two more to go. Two more to go. So five up. Uh, so, sorry, six up saves. Yeah, and then so, feel no pain. Which is two more. So, so the Phalanx Water Sergeant and the Apothecary, by the looks of it, as he is the closest. We will measure and get back to you. So the Leviathan continuing its shooting. We've checked the range, and it was actually the Sergeant and one of the Phalanx Warders. So moving on, we have the Volkite shots. So four shots, twin linked Volkites. So all hit. Strength six, looking at twos to wound, so that is three wounds. So, so three armor saves, three, three armor plus. Saves. One so one fails. goes down, but feel no pain. Oh, it's fine. Saves. Disgusting and disgraceful activity. So after much deliberation, I have decided that my Iron Warriors are in fact going to finish off these guys. I was debating just making a run for the objective, but being an Iron Warrior, I wanted to get the grips with uh, the hated foe. I've chosen to open fire with bolt pistols and two crack missiles. See if I can't finish these guys off and then hopefully push on the objective. Dead Imperial Fist is more important than objectives at this point. Bolt pistol shots from the, the veteran squad. So eight shots of bolt pistols hitting on threes and wounding on fours. So we have a whopping two wounds from so bolt pistol. Two fire. saves onto the breach under the waters. They're two fine. Saves. Two crack missiles from the sponsor and launchers. So two hits. Twos to wounds, two wounds, so, so two. in wounds or death. Vulnerable save, sixes. Oh, and, oh, oh, and it's that. done. Oh, look at that. Two saves, unbelievable. Now we're going to move on. <laughs> So after that relatively short movement phase, it's on to my shooting for the turn five. The Graf Flux Bombard is going to open up onto the levee that's running away from it like a filthy Iron Warrior Stop coward. Filthy Iron Warrior coward. No threat to me. So as you can see, hits. Let's see if it scatters off. Nope, it's a direct hit. So it's strength 3d6 for armor penetration, so let's see if I can get through it. Triple six would be perfect. Uh, it is, however, 12 on the rear armor. So that glances, so, it, so I have my four of Invern, which it goes through. So it's another another um, hull point off. Two hull points. That's right. Grab flux. So it's gone. I'm Happy. chuffed. <laughs> Happy face. Happy here. chuffed. I killed another unit. <laughs> and then for the final bit of shooting, I've got all the bolt pistols from the Phalanx Waters into the veterans. All three bolt pistols. All three bolt pistols. Hitting on twos though, D. Hitting on twos. Oh, there we go. Three of them hit. Four, four, three of them wound. So come on. Die. Three ups. Oh my god. Two guys died. Two of them have gone down. So two guys dead. I've declared a charge against the veterans. I'm going to try and do as much damage as I can. And Dr. D to do his overwatching. Here we go. Let's see. Horrific Iron Warrior Overwatch take two. It's not what I want to see. So that's one hit. That'll do. It wounds. wounds. Let's see if I can stay alive. I don't, but I get to feel no pain. And he's, he's fine. I'm However, sorry. I was off the camera there for two seconds. <laughs> two crack missiles. Yeah. Can they do any damage? Sixes. No. No point. Nothing. Ready no, to get let's charged. See. Let's see. Charged. Can he make it in? It is a whopping three inch charge. Come on. No, nope, they're very well much they're, in they're there. In. <laughs> they, they couldn't be more in. So with them charging in, we're off striking at initiative four. I've got my apothecary. But because of the Imperial Fist Special Rules, Blood and Honor, they need to declare a charge for any character that they've got in the squad. Now, normally I do it with my Phalanx Warder Sergeant. However, he's dead. So my apothecary has to issue the challenge. And my 
veteran sergeant will accept the challenge. So we're going to pop these two guys over here. And the medic is going to attack first before he gets his face right. crushed so, by an iron warrior. Hitting on fours. That's one. And it failed to wound, so he's going to get oh. backhanded by a power fist now, isn't he? <laughs> Still on initiative step four, you've got all the veterans from the uh, Iron Warriors there with a massive 21 attacks. Additional guys come up oh. with two attacks base, so here we go. 21 attacks, hitting on fours. Not my best roll, sir. I'll take it, as long as you do worse. And then we will have wounding on fours. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wounds. No Ow. Pee. Ow. Okay. Okay. So, I'll do one at a time. So, that's one dead. Feel no pain, which he failed. So, that's dead. one One dead. One Save. fine. Another one dead. Feel no pain. He dead. He's dead. And the apothecary. Oh, it's a challenge, isn't he? He can still, may still spill over. Still spill over. So, the apothecary's dead as well. Feel no pain? No. Nope. Nope. Gone. That's so not you, Rick. The, the Imperial Fist charge in, and the veterans are like, no, that's what we wanted you to do, and completely smash them to bits. Consolidation for the veteran squad, they rolled a whopping six, and after stomping the Imperial Fist into the ground, they have advanced straight onto the objective, bearing down on the lone apothecary holding an objective by himself. The question is, will they get there? I have a Leviathan left now. No, you don't. You've got an apothecary oh, of course. in the yeah, corner. Yeah. Uh, that vital apothecary holding the objective as well, by the he way. He's holding an objective. We'll give him that. It's not for long. Well, you know, you might roll badly with your shit dice. <laughs> not bad dice. That's awful. <laughs> uh, there's part of me that, I mean, losing the Leviathan, it's, it's, it's not really distressing because, you know, you've got your Leviathan left now. Mm -hmm. The Torsion Crusher is just so nasty. Yeah, like I totally forgot about the two hull points taking yeah, damage from that as well. Absolutely um, So finishing off that level like that, beautiful touch, yeah. beautiful vindiction. Yeah, absolutely. It showed its contempt towards me and I oh, knacked yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. But being an Iron Warriors and an Imperial Fist game, mm. obviously we have negatives in our right of wars. Yep. So we can force each other to play. Well, I'm going to force him to play the last turn. And I'm making him play the no, last turn. No, I'm making him play the first I'm making you play first. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> so we are going to see this through to the bitter end. There is no two ways about that. So We'll yeah. see how it goes. Are we ready for turn six? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to Leviathan, he's got a lot of invulnerable saves. How many invulnerable saves <laughs> are we Are we going to test probability now, yeah, are we? we're going to do it. Oh, good. How many saves can he make? <laughs> Move my troops around a nice little bit there, getting a few more line of sights from the uh, the heavier units. My iron warriors have chosen to advance and completely capture the objectives, and then my iron havocs have now got a decent line of sight or a reasonable line of sight to that Leviathan dreadnought. Now, seven of these guys have moved yet again, so they will be snap firing their heavy weapons. However, three guys are on full ballistic skill, and we see when I did last time, so let's see if I can repeat that. So, the six guys who are on full ballistic skill, hitting on twos. Oh, Ian likes his ones. Mm-hmm. Roll those ones, D. And then sixes. There's two sixes, so that is two glances. Tank hunter. Oh, yes, tank hunter. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that is two glances. So two glances. Let's see if I can get my four plus and vulnerable save. Oh, nope. So two more. Two hull points. Two more hull points on my Leviathan. So moving swiftly along, the remaining auto cannons, the remaining 14 shots, will be opening fire as well. Obviously, the snap firing, so hitting on sixes. So come on, those sixes! Oh, oh look at that! You fluky four sixes. Fluky get. Just what I need. Now let's see if I can get those sixes to strip off that yeah. last hole point. So there's one there's six. One. Let's see. see if I can't get any more. There's, There's two. two sixes. Let's get my That's invulnerable two, save. Four, Come on. Two, can he make it or can he die? Oh, he's a waste oh, gone. Oh, he's obliterated. And with Auto the... cannon fire for the win yet again. And with that, I am out. I have nothing left. No. On the... Oh, no. Apologies. There's an apothecary right there. I tell a lie. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm skipping the rest of my shooting because most of it cannot draw line of sight to that lone apothecary carrying the corner, guarding the objective. So the Iron Warriors veteran squad is going to open up with their bolt guns. They're going to rapid fire that Marine to death. So let's see if they can do that. So here we go. So this is rapid firing bolt guns and the bolt pistol from the sergeant before I finish it off with missiles if they're even needed. So hitting on threes. Oh, maybe you may may need make those, those rocket launchers. I might need the rocket launchers. That is three wounds, so three saves, and you feel no pain. Let's see if I can stay alive. So uh, one fail. One fail, can he keep himself alive? He, he does! So it's down to the rocket launchers oh, now. Heck of the launchers. Which are so, gonna miss. So two they don't hits, miss. Two's to wound, he is He's gone. dead. Obliterized, the heavy the bolt guns didn't do it, but the launchers did. And with that, there is not a fist left on this moon side, and therefore Ian will not be getting his sixth turn. What a bloodbath. <laughs> I knew I was going to get a hammering, but I didn't realise I'd get that much of a hammering. I knew it was going to go that harsh at you. That was horrendous. That was nothing too horrific. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Dig. Um, dig. <laughs> um, so, we've worked out the victory points, and you'll be... <laughs> surprised to hear, I didn't get that many. So the Iron Warriors trap wor worked. And not only have they captured some of the possible agents of the sigil, possible, we'll, we'll see what how valuable they were. Hopefully, they're all morons. Oh, well, we'll see, won't we? Um, but also, they have destroyed mm -hmm. utterly mm -hmm. the hated foe that came to rescue those civilians. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, that's that's pretty much the end of it, really, isn't it? But I don't know about you, but I had a great laugh. I had a fantastic I had a it was, brilliant laugh playing that game. I love the aesthetic of them teleporting in and it being blinding yeah. initially going, well, blind doesn't do that much. I love blind and Leviathan Dreadnought for the better part of two turns. Well, I have it because I can't see straight. Well, this is this like I was saying previously, The one of the things I wanted to do, I wanted to try the Hammerfall uh, Strike Force to, to see how it works. And it's very cool, very fun, very oh, thematic. Yeah. But I, my army doesn't work well in open fields. It was originally built as a Zone Mortalis Force and it's very good at that. But on an open field where things can kill it very, very quickly, like all the heavy weapon squads, the rocket launchers, the amount of rocket oh, launchers you've got in your army, D, is and obscene! I, I've got as many as Alex. I know! <laughs> it's obscene is what it is. But um, we have decided, whilst this game is finished, Ian wants vengeance. Of course I do. Why wouldn't I? So... Filthy Iron Warrior dirt. <laughs> Go dig a hole. That's what you're good for. So therefore, what we are going to do is we actually are going to turn this into a three-stage campaign. Mm -hmm. So this was the first part of that campaign, and the Iron Warriors have seized hostages. So they're not just seized hostages from here. They would have taken them from elsewhere, because yeah. obviously this is only a small part of a larger battle ran by mysterious figures mm. who are yet to be named. Mm. Um, and therefore, the next game will be the Iron Warriors... Defending themselves. Defending themselves yeah. against an insurgent force of Imperial Fist trying to rescue those high-value targets in a Zone Mortalis. So that'll be the first Zone Mortalis game for, uh, yeah, for, the, for Sector Wargaming. And, and again, like I say, my force is definitely organised much more for Zone Mortalis. So fingers crossed, my dice won't betray me as much as they have done in this game and the last game and every game I play, but it is a, it's a strong theme. See how it goes. <laughs> So to round off this game, uh, the final victory points were um, eleven mm -hmm. to myself, the Iron Warriors, yep. and that's all the unit, all of every single one of my units and my warlord and as well. Murdered them uh, all. Yeah. Sir. Whereas I only got five, which you know I, I feel I was pretty pretty good for what that's happened. Too bad. However, the Iron Warriors have secured two hostages. Now the question really is now is how valuable are those hostages mm. to the Iron Warriors and the greater battle beyond? So. We've got two War of Lies to roll up on. So for the first one, yep. and Ian will adjudicate these. Yep. So obviously for those that don't remember the War of Lies table, so one is no victory points. On a two to three, it is one victory point. On a four, it is two VPs. Yep. On a five, it is three VPs. And on the roll of a six, it is minus D3 VPs. So double six followed by a double six. You've seen how he's nonsense at rolling sixes <laughs> so fingers crossed so let's see how this rolls out so dice roll one 
It's a one. So, so no, no victory, victory points. points. Don't need the real. No. Second VP. Two. two. So one victory point. So a grand total of 12 altogether for yourself. And five, and five for five me. For oh, well and truly beaten is what that was. But I, like I say, I had a great laugh. No, it was a good laugh. And I'm game. looking forward to the next one. Let's have the next one. It's going to be... Hopefully it won't be as hot as well. If you don't know, it's been very warm here. <laughs> but, no. but no, see you in the next one. Appointment, isn't it? Yes. Hello and welcome to Sec. Try again. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> so, in typical Iron Warriors fashion, the Leviathan Dreadnought is disregarding the easier to kill blob behind him and has decided he's going to tear apart this lone heavy bolter. He's a sergeant and therefore he's worth something. Actually, no, it's not. I'm assuming we're videoing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's in the outtakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or in the start of it, who cares? Moving. The Hound of Fenris! The Dude! The Dude! So moving in initiative step one there, the Phalanx Warders uh, charged in with all their power axes there. Uh, try that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's an outtake. <laughs> <laughs>